Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit 2018. Uh, I would invite everyone to please have a seat, enjoy a coffee, water, or juice on us. There's plenty of seats at the front. Uh, feel free to trickle on forward while we listen to our next, uh, next presentation during the Hydrogen Production and Energy Storage Morning. So next up, we have the Liquid Organic Hydrogen Carrier Technology for Large-Scale Hydrogen Logistics. And here speaking with us today is the Head of Product Management from Hydrogenius Technologies, Dr. Martin Schneider. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here at the Hanover Fair. And I want to introduce our technology for Liquid Organic Hydrogen Carrier uh, hydrogen storage. So the company Hydrogenius Technologies in is, uh, is in existence for the past, past five years, was founded by Dr. Daniel Teichmann in 2013 and followed a technology development between BMW and the University of Erlangen-Nuremberg to develop a new technology for hydrogen storage. To solve the problem how hydrogen can be stored and transported at high storage density in a liquid carrier oil. And the initial idea is nine, nine years ago was to bring this technology on board of cars, because then you can use the existing fuel infrastructure that we have already today for gasoline and diesel to transport hydrogen at high storage densities and fuel them in the cars uh, just like gasoline and diesel today and do the conversion to release the hydrogen from LOHC on board of the cars. Uh, a lot of technology improvement was done in this corporation and then in 2013 the company Hydrogenius Technologies was founded. The university itself became shareholder of the company, transferring all the patent applications to the company and Anglo-American Platinum invested in the company in 2014 the world's biggest producer of platinum and precious group metals. And of course, they see our technology as enabling technology for other hydrogen technologies. And last year, we had our uh, third funding round together with Broad Ocean Motor, uh, one of the leading companies in China for electric drivetrain solutions with a market share of 30% in China. And they now focus on fuel cell uh, vehicles, fuel cell buses and last mile delivery trucks in China and want to use our technology to supply hydrogen refueling stations with more than 1,000 kilograms of hydrogen per day. And our other partners shown here are MAN. We work together with uh, them to scale up our systems into uh, really large scale hydrogen storage uh, units. And we work together with Clariant as a catalyst developer for our catalytic processes of hydrogen storage and hydrogen release. And Sasol is our supplier of the liquid uh, that we use. We use dibenzyl toluene as LOHC material, which is a very well-established heat transfer fluid in industry used at temperatures up to 390 degrees to transfer heat. And the molecular structure of dibenzyl toluene allows it to store and release hydrogen to this mesomeric uh, pi system of the carrier material. United Hydrogen, shown here, is our partner in the US. We have sold the first three systems to the US and delivered two of them end of last year. Uh, they are in operation at their site uh, in, in Tennessee. And Hyern is our um, partner, scientific partner together with the University of Erlangen-Nuremberg for further technology development and improvement. We consider ourselves to be the global leader of LOHC technology and uh, want to revolutionize the way hydrogen is being transported and stored in large quantities. And we focus on stationary systems. So uh, in contrast to what uh, the initial development between BMW and the university focused on, we focus on stationary units for hydrogen storage and hydrogen release and all the supply chain of hydrogen between the site where it is produced and the site where it is used is done in liquid fossil fuel infrastructure. 
So if you look at how hydrogen is stored and transported today, you either have to go to extremely high pressures or extremely low temperatures in order to increase the storage density for hydrogen up to a value where it makes sense to transport it. And these storage technologies uh, under high pressure or cryogenic temperatures still have the problem that you have a dangerous good, you have a flammable gas, uh, um, you have explosive risks, large safety zones, therefore uh, high capex costs for the whole supply chain. And we now use a different technology for the whole transportation by using liquid organic hydrogen carriers. These alls, you can see uh, the unloaded dibenzyl toluene and the loaded per hydro dibenzyl toluene here. These oils can be stored and transported in conventional fuel infrastructure, just like gasoline and diesel today at ambient conditions with no high pressure or cryogenic temperature solutions necessary. And the loading and unloading step is catalyzed in a hydrogenation reaction and a dehydrogenation reaction where the hydrogen is chemically attached to the carrier oil. And after the chemical attachment of the hydrogen to the carrier oil, it's still an oil. It can be transported at ambient conditions. It has a very wide liquid range. The carrier liquids themselves are not considered a dangerous good for road transport. You don't have any explosive risks, no flammability, uh, very low toxicity compared to gasoline and diesel. Uh, so therefore, the whole supply chain between the hydrogen source and the hydrogen demand becomes very easy to handle. And if the hydrogen is needed again, you release the hydrogen from the loaded LOHC and in an endothermic dehydrogenation reaction at up to 300 degrees Celsius, one to three bar, the hydrogen gets released and you can use it in a fuel cell application in a hydrogen refueling station or in an industrial application. And this short video uh, will show you a little bit the safety advantage uh, we try to uh, inflame our liquids. You can see the unloaded liquid on the left, the loaded liquid on the right, and what happens if you uh, work with an open flame. And you can see that the flame extinguishes for the unloaded liquids, but also for the loaded liquid. So the whole advantage of handling a liquid which is hardly flammable and non-explosive gives you a unique advantage in your whole hydrogen supply chain and particularly if you want to store and transport large quantities of hydrogen. And for the whole transportation supply chain, of course, you have a very high storage density. You have 6.2 weight percent of hydrogen that you can store in the liquid carrier. And of course, it's not a flammable gas, but it's uh, an inflammable liquid. And instead of using five tube tra conventional tube trailers at 200, 250 bars, you can uh, just use a conventional fuel truck. And that saves you a lot of cost for your whole supply chain and increases the safety uh, for large-scale transportation and handling of hydrogen. The liquid itself also is low-priced. Um, since it is a well-established heat transfer fluid all over the world. Sasol is not the only supplier, but also Arkema in, in France or uh, many suppliers in China produce liquid at uh, low cost. And you, the good thing with LOHC, particularly for the supply chain, is that it is very scalable. So not only can you transport LOHC in a conventional fuel truck at ambient conditions, but you can also use train transport, which makes large quantity hydrogen transportation very cheap. And also the super tankers that you know that uh, ship fossil fuels today could be used for large quantity hydrogen transportation. And in one of these tankers, if we look at uh, 75 thousand cubic meter tanker that could store more than 3,400 tons of hydrogen, which of course is enough, as you all know, for several thousand refuelings of passenger cars or buses or trains. 
So we focus in our technology development on particularly large-scale hydrogen refueling stations for uh, 1,000 tons of uh, 1,000 kilograms of hydrogen per day plus. Because you have a large handling and storage um, advantage, obviously you can use standard underground tanks at fueling stations just like you use today for gasoline or diesel for alloy seed storage. And you can store more than uh, 5,000 uh, kilograms of hydrogen in these standard underground tanks. You don't have any boil-off losses or discharge over the time, so the hydrogen storage material is very safe and, and stable. The hydrogen doesn't get, uh, doesn't get out of the liquids if you don't use a catalytic process and the right conditions. So therefore, long-time storage is not a problem. You have a very low cost for hydrogen bulk storage, a low delivery frequency due to the high storage density, very safe handling, obviously, a small footprint, and a high social acceptance since our, um, yeah, our people are used to fossil fuel infrastructure handling uh, fuels, uh, liquid fuels. And then after the dehydrogenation, which is typically a containerized system or for bigger systems, a uh, rack-based system, uh, you have a hydrogen compression and the cascade, the typical cascade storage as well. But the bulk storage can be uh, done by simple oil tanks. And this is just an example of how the systems look. This is the, one of the first demo units we have built up. It's in operation since 2016 at the Fraunhofer Research Center in Stuttgart, around about 200 kilometers away from our headquarters in Erlangen, near Nuremberg. And we deliver LOHC to this, um, to this location, release the hydrogen from the liquid carrier, and use it in a fuel cell of Proton Motor. And now a, a few additional projects. This is the Copernicus project we, where we are involved in. It's one of the biggest or the biggest research project uh, set up by the Federal Ministry of Education Research in, in Germany. Uh, one of the biggest projects within the Energiewende. And here we are involved in the, in the cluster Power to X, where we uh, show how LOHC technology can be used for hydrogen supply for industrial sites and hydrogen refueling stations. And this project here is a European FCH joint undertaking funded project where we are in a consortium with Wojkowski, uh, the leading Scandinavian industrial gas company uh, for also hydrogen supply, uh, with High Gear, a special uh, specialist for gas purification units, the University of Erlangen Nuremberg for uh, research and the VTT Research Center uh, as a test site as well. And this project started the, this year. And uh, next year, we will deliver two systems, one storage unit and one release unit um, to our Finnish, uh, Finnish partners. This is our first commercial system in the US. You can see the system in operation uh, is, is in operation since end of 2017 with our partner United Hydrogen Group where we have delivered a storage box system that is able to store more than nine kilograms of hydrogen per hour and two release systems, uh, one of them already delivered. Uh, one is releasing three kilograms of hydrogen per hour and the other one 0 0.2 kilograms of hydrogen per hour, which is used in a power plant uh, cooling application. And last but not least, our project in China with our new investor, Broad Ocean uh, Motor, they want to supply hydrogen to large-scale hydrogen refueling stations. Um, they plan to build up uh, 600 hydrogen-powered fuel cell buses and last-mile delivery trucks. And for the hydrogen refueling stations that have a demand of more than 1,000 kilograms of hydrogen per day, they want to use our technology to establish a nationwide hydrogen infrastructure based on these LOHC materials. And with this project uh, out outline, we will deliver two systems uh, next year, and then a uh, second rollout phase is planned to supply more and larger systems to their hydrogen refueling networks. And with this outline, I want to close my talk. Thank you all for your uh, attention.
And of course, we're open for I'm open for questions. And uh, you are more than welcome to visit us at C66 booth uh, 76. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much for that talk. At this point, if there are any questions, I can bring the microphone down to you. All right. Great. We'll, uh, we'll get this started. <laughs> Uh, Tim Amman Götting, I'm a private visitor here. Uh, can you use this liquid endlessly, or is it um, can we charge it all the time? Yes. So the liquid um, can be used several hundred times. Of course, since it is an organic liquid, you have a certain degradation of the material. Also, in the high temperature heat processes where it is used standard uh, as a standard. Uh, it runs over a couple of years, and then you have to uh, refurbish it. It would be the same for our process, so, but you can use it several hundred times. We aim to uh, develop our systems for more than 1,000 cycles that you can run the liquids uh, at. And of course, since you have a certain degree of degradation, you would have to top it up every now and then, or exchange the batch and recycle the liquid in a, in a distillation. Uh, Rodolfo Tacchiano, University of Trieste. I just was wondering what is the energy balance. The technology is very interesting, but uh, for example, how much heat I need to run a 10 megawatt uh, electric fuel cell? Yes. So the system is a, a cycle where you have an exothermic hydrogenation reaction and an endothermic dehydrogenation reaction. So in the hydrogenation reaction, you get out heat at roughly 250 degrees Celsius that you can use. If you cannot use it, then you will lose it. But you have to put in exactly the same amount of heat in the dehydrogenation reaction. And this amount of heat is roughly 10 kilowatt hours per kilogram of hydrogen. So you get that out at the hydrogenation reaction, and you have to put it in at the dehydrogenation reaction. If you look at the supply chain, of course, you have to um, see how, you, how that compares with other technologies. So for compression, up to 350 or 700 bars, you need 10 to 20% of the lower heat value of hydrogen uh, in form of electrical energy. For cryogenic hydrogen, you need up to 45% of the lower heat value for since the cryogenic plants are not optimized for, for energy um, efficiency. Uh, so you have to compare that with other supply chain solutions. And obviously, um, the supply of heat for the dehydrogenation is a very critical point. You have to think, how can you supply that heat, either by means of electrical heating or by means of natural gas, or waste heat utilization would be the optimum, of course. If you have a re-electrification, for instance, a, a combination with a solid oxide fuel cell would be ideal because you can use the high off-heat of the high temperature fuel cell um, to heat the dehydrogenation reaction. So, um, Richard Hanke Rauschenbach from the University of Hanover. Thank you for this very nice presentation about that fascinating technology. Um, my question would be about cost. Um, if you would have your, your hydrogenation and the dehydrogenation plant, let's say, designed for a run of 8,700 hours per year, so almost through, um, for what would be the levelized cost of storage, so to say? So how many euros do you need to store um, uh, one ton of hydrogen and then over the lifetime of your plant? Do you have a number for that? I don't have it from the top of my head, unfortunately, but I can look it up and, and, and send you some detailed cost analysis, of course. Um, we have looked at the cost of different hydrogen storage technologies and to, to, in order to understand the, the economics behind it. And what we see is, particularly for large quantities of hydrogen storage or large distance transport, more than 100 kilometers and more than 1,000 tons of hydrogen, LOHC technology becomes very economic, uh, economically competitive with other hydrogen storage technologies. But if you, if you want, I can, uh, I can send you some detailed information on the, on the economics. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Peter Hamann from Mankan and Partner. 
Uh, my question, uh, Dr. Snyder, it's a very uh, good presentation, and my question is, uh, how is the purification after the dehydration of yes. the hydrogen? Yes. So, since we want to supply hydrogen to hydrogen refueling stations, of course, we have to meet the criteria of the ISO and SAE norm. And for this, we, to ensure this purity, we work with PSA systems. You've seen a partner of, uh, in the High Stock project, we work together with High Gear. They design and, and manufacture PSA systems. Uh, the good thing is that the hydrogen comes out of the LOHC relatively pure. So we already have a 99.95% purity of hydrogen when it is released. So therefore, we only need a minor um, uh, purification step after the, uh, after the reaction. So the, the dehydrogenation reaction and the new generation catalysts we work with that uh, were developed by Clariant have a very high purity uh, and a very high temperature and long-term stability of our carrier liquid, so therefore we don't see any major impurities in the gas stream. Great, thank you so much. And if there's no more questions at this time, uh, you're obviously all welcome to go uh, visit Dr. Schneider at booth B76 uh, for Hydrogenius Technologies. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Pleasure. At this point, I'd like to inform you all of a slight change in our schedule. Our 1040 presentation of Plastic Omnium High Pressure Gas Storage Systems um, by Plastic Omnium has been moved to Thursday at 2.40. Um, so they'll, we'll be taking a short break, but we'll be back at 11 a.m. with our next presentation. Thank you so much.